Recording in progress. Dobar dan svima. Zadovoljstvo mi je predstaviti vas kao moderator. Good morning to all of you. It is my great pleasure to greet you as moderator of this important event where we are going to discuss national determined contributions of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm Nikola Vučić. Bosnia and Herzegovina has submitted to the UN uh, FCC, the updated uh, NDS, NDC. With this, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, was uh, actually showing its commitment uh, to Paris Climate Agreement when the world leader uh, agreed to improve climate action. What this actually means, uh, we will hear today. The climate change is one of the main challenges that the whole mankind is facing. They are impacting uh, all the aspects of environment, economy. They are also detrimental to sustainable development uh, of society. Adoption of NDC is very important. But we need to focus on the implementation of the measures uh, that are going uh, to reduce uh, emission of uh, uh, greenhouse uh, gases. Uh, the domestic uh, institutions uh, uh, were the main holders of this, uh, if, of this uh, process, but we also have the representatives uh, and the ambassadors uh, of uh, UK, Italy, and the representatives of uh, UN uh, family. Uh, they are also going uh, to be the hosts uh, of uh, the uh, international conference that will be held in 2021. Before we start, I would like us all to look at the video of National Geographic uh, on the impact uh, of climate change. This is actually a good introduction to our conference. From pollution to all population are driving up the Earth's temperature and fundamentally changing the world around us. The main causes of phenomenon known as the greenhouse effect. Gases in the atmosphere, such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and chlorofluorocarbons, let the sun's light in, but keep some of the heat from escaping, like the glass walls of a greenhouse. The more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the more heat gets trapped, strengthening the greenhouse effect and increasing the Earth's temperature. Human activities, like the burning of fossil fuels, have increased the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere by more than a third since the Industrial Revolution. The rapid increase in greenhouse gases in the atmosphere has warmed the planet at an alarming rate. While Earth's climate has fluctuated in the past, atmospheric carbon dioxide hasn't reached today's levels in hundreds of thousands of years. Climate change has consequences for our oceans, our weather, our food sources, and our health. Ice sheets, such as Greenland and Antarctica, are melting. The extra water that was once held in glaciers causes sea levels to rise and spills out of the oceans, flooding coastal regions. Warmer temperatures also make wet...
where plants and animals can live, shift, and water supplies are diminished. In addition to creating new agricultural challenges, climate change can directly affect people's physical health. In While the rapid rate of climate change is caused by humans, humans are also the ones who can combat it. If we work to replace fossil fuels with renewable energy sources like solar and wind, which don't produce greenhouse gas emissions, we might still be able to prevent some of the worst effects of climate change. Yes, yeah, no. Once again, welcome. I would like to ask now, at the beginning, the chairman of the Green Club, uh, the NP in the Parliament Assembly of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mr. Sasha Magazinovic. Mr. Magazinovic, please, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, representatives of diplomatic corps, distinguished ministers, uh, colleagues, NPs, representatives of NGOs, uh, welcome to the Parliamentary Assembly of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Today, we are going to talk uh, about the determined contribution of Bosnia and Herzegovina for the period 2020-2030 in our endeavor to fight uh, climate change. And at the, the beginning, I would like to say that I am an opposition representative and I would like to congratulate and thank the Council of Ministers for the adoption of this very important document. On the other hand, this event also proves uh, that we together have managed uh, to introduce uh, on the agenda of the Parliament uh, green policies and environment protection topics, uh, as well as uh, combating climate change. Colleague Prodanovic will agree with me when I say that with all this, uh, we can also add preservance and of our health uh, through all these activities. I'm so glad because I think these are the topics that are common for all of us. The air, I just recently said, is not Bosnian, Croatian or Serbian. There is no such Bosniak or Croatian or Serbian air. There is clean air or polluted air. So we should all ask ourselves, uh, but also our environment, what are we doing? What are we doing to make the air in Bosnia and Herzegovina cleaner? What are we doing to reduce uh, the emission of CO2? I know that it is difficult to put these topics into the focus of public and I do understand uh, all of those who will say you are focusing on climate change while different things uh, are happening. But let me say that we all need to know that once these topics are in the focus of public that will illustrate for all of us that we are living in a better society or to be more precise for all of us in bosnia and herzegovina society it is better to focus on polluters of the environment instead the polluters of our souls including the politicians as polluters of the souls thank you very much and welcome again thank you mr magazinovic and we will proceed with our high level event. Uh, UNDP has uh, provided a support uh, for the NDC through climate uh, pledge uh, and uh, 
it's providing assistance uh, to a uh, high number of the countries. Uh, uh, this pledge was supported by Germany, Sweden, European Union, Italy, Spain and the other key partners. Uh, it is my pleasure to announce uh, a resident representative of UNDP in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mrs. Uh, Steliana Nadera. Please, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to uh, provide these welcome remarks on behalf of uh, the United Nations Development Program team in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we're very happy to support, convene this event together, and we're very happy that uh, it is again an event that brings together the greatest supporters for climate change in the country. Uh, for UNDP, climate change has been always uh, a big part of the work that we do around the world, uh, but now it is even more important. Um, the momentum created by the Conference of Parties uh, 26 that uh, will be held in Glasgow in, um, uh, in November of this year has, it means that we are all this, this year we are calling for more attention to the problems created by climate change. We are calling for more action uh, on climate change, and we are calling for greater partnerships on climate change. So we're very happy today to have the opportunity to listen to the uh, uh, promises, to the ambition of Bosnia-Herzegovina, but also to discuss concrete ways forward. And um, on our side, as an organization that has uh, technical expertise and uh, also is doing lots of concrete work on the ground, we definitely remain committed to uh, work in this area in the next five years. This area is very, very important, not only for us, but I think for the entire United Nations uh, team in, in the country and um, under the leadership of the United Nations Resident Coordinator, we hope to uh, uh, make a bigger impact and achieve great results together with all partners. Thank you. Thank you very much, a distinguished UNDP representative. And now, um, it is the time for the Minister of Foreign Trade and Economic uh, Relations of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mr. Stasha Kosharat, uh, uh, to address us uh, and uh, to present uh, the NDC of Bosnia and Herzegovina for period 2020-2030. Thank you. Your Excellencies, dear colleagues, dear friends, first of all, thank you for this uh, small uh, gift uh, that we have received. I'm sure that when we start uh, analyzing uh, our activities, uh, this uh, will be something that we'll be working on. Thank you for this gift. It will be in the cabinet of the minister. And any time when we start discussing these issues, uh, it will serve as our reminder that we need uh, to work uh, harder. It is uh, my great pleasure and honor to address you uh, in terms uh, of the national determined contributions uh, of uh, uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is the task that we have finalized uh, under very complex uh, context of the pandemic. Uh, we worked under difficult uh, uh, circumstances, but I believe that we have created a good uh, document. Uh, climate change is the greatest challenge that the mankind is facing, and they also influence all socio-economic aspects of life and uh, are detrimental to the sustainable development. Uh, this is the reason why we all are aware that we need to work more intensively on these issues. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, we see the evidence of climate uh, change and we are doing everything that we can uh, to uh, have initiatives like this uh, successful in our country. The key challenge uh, for Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, is uh, to focus on uh, low carbon uh, 
missions uh, in order to achieve sustainable development and social uh, cohesion while paying attention to the time that is required for our transition. Having in mind the global trends, I believe that through investments uh, in the emission reduction of greenhouse uh, gases, uh, we, this will lead uh, to increase uh, in and uh, creation of new uh, jobs. Uh, and uh, I believe that all the countries, signatories of the Paris, uh, Paris Agreement, uh, have uh, committed uh, to prepare the NDCs. Uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina has uh, submitted uh, its uh, revised uh, NDC to the UNFCC in April 2020. Uh, one and the Ministry of uh, Foreign uh, Trade and Economic uh, Relations proposed uh, this document to the Council of Ministers and the Council of Ministers adopted the document. Uh, with the submission of this document, we are the first the Western Balkan country that uh, submitted its updated NDC. The key components of this pledge uh, include the significant decarbonization of economy with the focus on energy sector, building sector, transport, the forestry, agriculture, waste management with the investment of around 17 million km in this period. Uh, and this is around 5% uh, uh, of the GDP of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Let me just uh, uh, mention the uh, summit that we just uh, had uh, in uh, um, where we discussed uh, the plan and uh, the decarbonization policy policies uh, in the countries of the region and all over the world. We had uh, intensive discussions with the representatives of energy community to see how to open the decarbonization process in Bosnia and Herzegovina with a specific deadline. Uh, I believe that there is a lot of work to do and I would like to urge all of us uh, to to intensively get uh, involved in this. Uh, the Ministry, uh, together with the World uh, Bank, is implementing the uh, map, uh, the road map uh, uh, on fossil uh, fuels, uh, and uh, we are uh, looking for your contributions and your support as international organizations, because we are creating policies that are going to be very important for the local level. We are focused uh, on the uh, energy production from renewable sources uh, and uh, we also want uh, to have this integrated uh, climate uh, plan for Bosnia and Herzegovina that will uh, focus uh, more on the new sources uh, and renewable sources such as uh, sun, water and wind. Uh, these ambitions uh, reductions of uh, uh, GIG emissions by 2030 uh, uh, two thirds by 2050 compared to 1990. Uh, we also want uh, to stop the trend of increase in the short period of time. We also have uh, envisaged 80% uh, uh, reduction of the emissions in the forestry sector. In terms of adaptation to climate, uh, uh, changes uh, in terms of uh, energy sector, agriculture sector, uh, biodiversity and other sector is also our focus. These objectives cannot be achieved overnight uh, and we believe that updated uh, NDC offers a good international basis uh, for green development and uh, economic environment transformation and also transferring from fossil fuels uh, to renewable renewable sources. Having in mind that the environment protection, it is uh, my obligation to tell you that we took uh, from the drawers uh, uh, the decision of the quality of oil and uh, oil derivatives. Uh, if we adopt this decision, we will uh, address uh, the consumer protec protection and all the other objectives uh, that are part of our um, initiative for the membership uh, in the World uh, Trade Organization. In, the, uh, in Trebinje, during the summit, uh, we have been discussing all these issues uh, and we touched upon the uh, regulation adoption in the 
uh, electricity uh, domain and uh, natural gas. We need to resolve that in order to be able to get uh, um, active uh, in the activities pertaining or stemming uh, from the uh, Paris uh, Agreement. Uh, having in mind uh, the um, conditions in Bosnia and Herzegovina and our ambitions, uh, I would like to underline the importance of the support uh, of the international community in terms of uh, technology transfer and financial support, uh, especially by EU, international community and private sector as well when it comes to climate, uh, uh, combating climate change and uh, transfer of technology. I would like to thank UNDP for the successful implementation of this project and all other projects that we implemented together. I would also like to thank all of you who gave your contribution uh, to the drafting of this document so that Bosnia and Herzegovina is the first Western Balkan countries to have this updated uh, NDC. I would also like to thank uh, domestic local institutions uh, who provided their support, the Green uh, Club, uh, and also, let me be open, tomorrow in Zagreb, as we bluntly said, uh, in uh, Banja Luka, in Mostar, in Novi Grad, in uh, Kozarska Dubica, Krupa Nauni, and other municipalities, we are going to fight for the interests uh, of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina citizens and 13 uh, municipalities, and we are going uh, to talk about uh, the uh, waste uh, damp uh, for the radioactive waste. Uh, this is going to be the only uh, issue that I want uh, to discuss uh, with Croatian ministry. Of course, ministries, uh, of course, having in mind uh, the good bilateral uh, relations, but I want to underline that we are not uh, giving up uh, the science, the arguments, the evidence that we have uh, in terms uh, of uh, the damp on Trgovska Gora. I'm not saying this just uh, to um, have uh, to make some impression on you. I'm just uh, saying this uh, to you, sharing this with you, because we need your support. We want uh, all the institutions, all the authorities to participate in the protection of uh, environment and health of each and every person in this country. So please, all of you sitting in this uh, room today, help us uh, in Brussels uh, to uh, to um, share our stance uh, and prevent Croatia in doing uh, what they have uh, planned to do. Thank you very much. All the best to all of you. Thank you, Minister Stasha Kosharec. So how to reduce the emission of uh, CO2? And what uh, is uh, the forest protection? We will hear the presentation by Minister of uh, Environment and Tourism in the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina before Minister Edita Japo takes up uh, uh, um, the floor. I will just remind you that in line with the global index climate risk in 2014, Bosnia and Herzegovina was on the third place in terms of the total losses and damages uh, caused by uh, climate change. Minister Japo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, esteemed ministers, delegates and representatives, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to greet all of you on behalf of the Federation Government and the Ministry of Environmental Protection on my own behalf. And I would like to express sincere gratitude that we can talk today about the NDC of Bosnia and Herzegovina for climate change in the period of 2020-2030. This is one of the biggest challenges faced by the entire mankind because it affects all segments of the society, the economy, and it has an effect on sustainable development. And looking at the Mediterranean and the sub-Mediterranean area, 
we are especially vulnerable to climate change uh, with a forecast of intense and uh, of intense uh, natural uh, trends uh, such as uh, floods and the main strategic planning in the area of adaptation to climate change and as a country uh, as a uh, country in transition bosnia herzegovina is faced with many challenges including economic and environmental challenges and climate change issues are a big commitment a big obligation for all levels of government in bosnia herzegovina talking about the uh, eu integration process uh, bosnia herzegovina as a country with pre-candidate status needs to reform its public administration in order to establish the proper capacities for uh, transposition of EU legislation and implementation of measures in the area of climate change and other associated areas that are relevant for the environment and sustainable development such as decarbonization, circular economy, clean air, soil and uh, water and rural development. We have signed up to the Green Agenda for Western Balkans and taken over this commitment. And this needs to be incorporated in the environmental protection strategies that are being drafted for the state level and for the entity level and for the Birchko district. The NDC document that was adopted by the Council of Ministers includes uh, adaptation to climate change and it has an ambitious goal to reduce uh, greenhouse emissions and when determining the goals uh, for up to 2030 this takes into account the uh, pledges from the paris agreement and as a member of the energy community and looking at to 2014 as the baseline year uh, with which to reduce the emissions and there are highly indicative parameters parameters from the ndc that illustrate the situation with uh, greenhouse uh, emission reduction and looking at uh, per capita data the emission in 2010 had reached the uh, per capita level from 1990 5.18 carbon dioxide which is uh, much lower than the eu average in 2014 the emission was 7.38 tons per capita which is around 15 percent lower than the average in eu member countries but if we were to compare this to the gdp the emissions in bosnia Herzegovina are nearly five times higher than those in the eu so the greenhouse gas emissions per gdp is 1.7 cot co two per euro while the eu average is uh, 0.39 tons per one euro this statistical data illustrates the economic and social situation of bosnia herzegovina which has a relatively low level of emissions and it also has a low gdp per capita which shows irrational uh, use of uh, capacities and especially energy and we need to have more resource energy efficiency in all the relevant economic areas especially those that have to do with decarbonization and we have to have rational and transparent use of renewable source of energy such as water wind sun and biomass with regard to the hydro 
energy area, which is uh, up to one third, we need to focus on technical organization of hydroelectric uh, power plants. And this has to be taken into account when designing them. And the plans to build new plants have to focus not only on energy production, power production, but also on even-handed uh, use and distribution. And it needs to be tied to tourist potential. Um, the equipment has become cheaper for wind energy, and that requires support and then focus for Bosnia and Herzegovina. It's especially uh, the issue of forestry and forest management is very important because we have different types of, of woods and, and forests. Bosnia and Herzegovina and forests need to be looked at uh, through the prism of their uh, multi-purpose use. And we have much diversity with a special environmental role, and we need to look at it as a very important resource. In the context of climate change, forests are a significant source of sinks, and they are an alternative source of energy in terms of decarbonization. In the Federation, we have a serious problem which is that the forest law hasn't been adopted yet and it needs to be adopted as soon as possible in order to deal with this issue in a systematic fashion. It's also important to know that uh, before we become a member of the EU, we need to know that the EU, in order to protect its environmental policies and its energy sector and economy and protect it from uh, bad competition uh, it will introduce new co2 levels and uh, export of power will have an additional tax that will affect the price of electricity and the cba mechanism this additional tax is not aimed at only the export of, of power, but also all the uh, production facilities and thermoelectric uh, power plants that use energy for production. So that's the direction where we should be heading, and that's how Bosnia Herzegovina needs to be transformed and moved towards uh, renewable sources of energy. And in the end, I'd like to ask a question as food for thought. How come the Bosnia Herzegovina, as a small country, can reach these goals that are ambitious and that are big for even a bigger country? This can be achieved only if we make quick and brave decisions and if we define goals uh, for transition and if we agree on uh, transition in the energy sector and if we move towards a modern model based on green uh, sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Japo. Now, it is an honor to have with us the head of the Ministry of Spatial Planning, Construction and Ecology of Republika Srpska, Srebrenica Golic, and she's also the contact point in the SEC for Bosnia and Skovina. So I'd like to ask her to take the floor and address us on this very important issue. I can, I may remove my mask now, yes. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, representatives of the government, of the executive at all levels, uh, media representatives, ladies and gentlemen. At the beginning, I would like to greet all of you on behalf of the Republika Srpska government on my own behalf as uh, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister and as the Minister of Environment. 
I'm taking part uh, in today's very important event, which is our contribution to the biggest challenge that is faced by the entire mankind. So climate change is one of the biggest challenges for the mankind because it doesn't just affect the environment, uh, it also affects sustainable development and the economy and has a negative impact on human health. And today, in times of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have also the politicization of this issue. And the World Health Organization, even before the outbreak of COVID-19, warned that climate change would affect the spreading of diseases. And you see that it's true, judging by what we've been faced with since 2019. So these changes are very visible and are calculated in billions of euros. So this generation of decision makers needs to understand this challenge and needs to do everything within its powers to reduce the negative effect of climate change. So the first key feature that we have to introduce as a pattern of behavior for the next generations is responsibility, responsibility, responsibility. So in 2014, which was the final year for which we did an official inventory of greenhouse emissions, the so it was 1.87 kilograms uh, of the equivalent carbon dioxide and uh, the EU average was uh, 0.39, which shows uh, uh, an irrational uh, use of our resources and we need to move to low carbon uh, economy and we need to achieve uh, sustainable uh, development goals uh, taking into account the uh, current uh, economic uh, structure and through investing in the projects to reduce emissions and these represent a potential for economic growth job creation and reduction of employment risks and a prompt answer to the energy crisis paves the way for new investment cycles and in energy efficiency in buildings in water management area, and when it comes to Bosnia and Herzegovina, these are the most vulnerable areas. According to USAID data, investment of several billions in energy efficiency, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the GDP could increase by 370 million. That's USAID data. That means around 5,000 uh, new jobs and uh, Ministry of Environment of Republika Srpska as the contact point for the UN Climate Change Convention has done a lot to gain access to financial instruments that help uh, reduce the effect of climate change, uh, which continues to, to, to be present in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we have a systematic approach to climate change, which implies regular drafting and submission of plans that uh, are the basis for our efforts to fight uh, climate change. And we will soon present a biannual uh, report and a strategy for the adoption to climate change and uh, low carbon emissions that will define uh, countries' further path in the efforts uh, to fight climate change. So under the convention, we adopted the fourth national report. So we've met all of the obligations and it would be good to reach an agreement on this, but not all levels of government, not all the representatives listen to me. 
and they should take a look at the fourth uh, national report uh, because it has to do with us and generations to come we need you need to see what we're doing and what we're not doing to reverse certain processes and all of us need to get actively involved in the fight against uh, climate change and not just uh, pay lip service in conferences so reduction of emission and the ndc was uh, submitted to the un in april the Arts Ministry and the Federation Ministry adopted the this report the previous year and the Council Ministers adopted it this year and we were the first uh, country in the region to have met this obligation and this is the second keyword that I'm going to mention now we have an ambitious goal to reduce GHG by around one third by 2030 and by around two thirds uh, by 2050 with 1990 as the baseline year or 2014 and 2016. so we've had the enrollment of relevant experts and uh, the society but we need international assistance to strengthen our capacities for education education and education that's what uh, people of bosnia and Herzegovina need they need to be educated and, and informed and we need to have decarbonization we need to draft uh, the projects and do project studies and create preconditions for sustainable economic development in in the climate change era and we need to realize uh, the goals to uh, have a quick uh, social equalization but and we have potential for gr economic growth here and for job creation if we were to invest in uh, carbon emission uh, reduction projects and to uh, to have sustainable agriculture according to world bank data due to global warming and climate change Bosnia for the past 30 years uh, has had 23 different natural disasters with the biggest damage uh, done to agriculture which is the crucial uh, area of development for all uh, administrative levels of Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we need to create new, more resistant uh, species. We need to protect plants and uh, we need to work on irrigation and draining systems. We need to uh, create new opportunities in the insurance sector and the waste sector is also seen as having potential for reduction of emissions so important progress was made uh, laws have been am amended uh, in the area of waste management in both entities and we have a new strategy that's going to be updated uh, through the prism of the environmental protection strategy i would uh, like to use this opportunity to thank the swedish government for helping us to achieve this important uh, objective uh, the waste management strategy defines uh, the waste management based on the analysis uh, uh, conducted within this uh, sector this uh, sector is very specific uh, and uh, it will uh, focus on different measures uh, uh, where we will notice the results only in five to ten years it is also necessary to prepare the investment uh, programs uh, by uh, using uh, the european union uh, funds uh, uh, in order to achieve a low carbon scenario for waste management and in the period to come we need to implement uh, the guidelines uh, for uh, waste uh, disposal uh, 
and also the system for waste disposal in line with directives uh, and uh, also to focus on renewable energy production generation recycling of waste and all different measures that are necessary uh, to achieve our objective. So different areas will have to be covered uh, in order to reach uh, this uh, joint objective by 2030 and 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Spatial Planning and the Environment Protection Fund uh, two days ago have celebrated the World Environment uh, Day and uh, we were socializing uh, with uh, the uh, beneficiaries uh, of the um, Institution for Protection of Children Without Parental Care. But the protection of environment should not uh, be something that we are thinking about only on that specific day. This is our obligation. This is something that we need to focus every single day we as the legislators have to focus on this uh, the uh, forest of bosnia and herzegovina uh, of uh, republika srpska provided the samplings uh, which uh, we used uh, to improve the environment around uh, this institution for protection of children without parental care we wanted to create a better ecosystem in the place where they live but we also wanted to send a strong message that they are the representatives of new generation the new generation that uh, will need to focus on these uh, efforts uh, and to to convey the message that we cannot take the time back but we can invest uh, in new gardens, in new landscape, and we can clean the rivers. We are the generation that can make peace with the nature. Let's be active, not anxious, and let's join this initiative to protect the, the environment and the, the country that we live in. Thank you very much. Thank you for the inspirational words uh, that you have shared with us. And now we it's the time for the ambassadors uh, of uh, the countries that are providing significant support to Bosnia and Herzegovina in the domain of in my environment and combating climate uh, change to take the floor. First, we will have uh, His Excellency, Ambassador of uh, uh, United uh, Kingdom in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Please, uh, Your Excellency Matthew Field, uh, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Uh, it is my great pleasure to be here with uh, you. We are counting down the days to the November 1st when uh, in Glasgow uh, the 26th conference of UN will start uh, focusing on uh, climate change. UN, uh, in partnership with uh, Italy, will be the host, uh, and the gathered members will be seeking the solutions uh, for accelerated and more ambitious uh, efforts uh, to reach uh, the Paris Agreement objectives uh, and the Framework Convention of UN on Climate Change. We see the progress everywhere in the world, but it's not fast enough. That's why COP26 is extremely important and should serve as a turning point to meet the four objectives. The first one, we have asked all the countries to set clear goals for a reduction of GHG by 2030 to reach zero uh, emission by the end of the century. Second, we are encouraging the countries to provide stronger support uh, to the communities uh, facing the most uh, serious climate risks. Third, uh, we should increase the financing in order to be able to reach these objectives. And the fourth, uh, we need to work together all the sectors and all the parts of the society need to work together at the international level. The Prime Minister Johnson 
on a number of occasions uh, said that the recovery uh, following the COVID-19 should focus on greener and more prosperous future. The same message uh, we would like to send here today to the representatives of Bosnia and Herzegovina as well as NGO sector and business community. It is the time to move from fossil um, fuels uh, to renewable energy sources and to new jobs uh, that will lead this society to prosperity and will help us uh, protect uh, the environment. Uh, the uh, United uh, Kingdom uh, uh, took uh, uh, this uh, role uh, uh, to everywhere in the world uh, promote uh, this and focus on uh, clean growth in all sectors, including energy, transport and financial uh, sector, including uh, all the financial companies and institutions that need to have a key role in combating uh, climate uh, change. And we would like to encourage them uh, uh, to uh, join this uh, campaign race to zero. We would like uh, COP26 uh, uh, to have the uh, largest representation as possible, and we especially see the voice of youth as an uh, important tool. The NDC of Bosnia and Herzegovina is ambitious, but Bosnia and Herzegovina needs to reach uh, even higher improvement and progress. It is important uh, to improve the quality of air out Side, but also in the facilities, especially where youth uh, are spending their time. Uh, we are looking forward uh, to the participation of Bosnia and Herzegovina delegation uh, in uh, uh, Glasgow. Uh, and uh, there is no need uh, to uh, persuade uh, citizens of Bosnia and Herzegovina that we need to fight. Uh, uh, climate change. Just remember the floods uh, of 2014 and uh, the draft of 2012. Uh, and this serves as a reminder that we all need uh, to do uh, everything we can. There are great challenges of us, uh, ahead of us and it is our obligation to respond to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Matthew Field. Uh, and uh, now, uh, Dr. Ingrid uh, McDonald, the uh, resident coordinator of UN in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, will take the floor. We would like to use this opportunity to thank her for all the support and attention that are focused uh, on climate, uh, uh, combating climate change uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, uh, ambassadors, dear friends and colleagues, I'm really delighted to be here with you today to mark Bosnia and Herzegovina's renewed commitment to advance climate action through these nationally determined contributions. Um, on Saturday's World Environmental Day, um, the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, uh, reminded us that we only have one planet and that that planet needs our help and that the next 10 years are our final chance to avert climate, climate catastrophe, turn back the deadly tide of pollution and end species loss. He also uh, characterized 2021 as the make or break year to confront the climate, global climate emergency earlier in the year. And with this, he called for countries to submit ambitious national action plans on the path to COP26, as has been highlighted by the ambassador from the United Kingdom field. I'm, it is really, um, it's really extraordinary to see how Bosnia and Herzegovina heard that call and was the first in the region to move forward with adopting those ambitious nationally, um, nationally de uh, determined contributions. Bosnia and Herzegovina has proved to be a leader, not only in the region, but also responsible as a member of the United Nations. You have accepted to carry your share of the burden to tackle our single greatest global challenge. That is the climate crisis. Your pledge to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 33% by 2030 and 66% by 2050 compared to 1990 levels is remarkable and ambitious. On behalf of the entire United Nations family in Bosnia and Herzegovina, I applaud your commitment 
and the hard work that it has taken to agree, to adopt and submit this pledge. It is a significant and welcome step on the path to COP26. As always though, putting commitments into practice can be challenging, as has been highlighted by the ministers here today. To achieve the NDC goals, Bosnia and Herzegovina will need to initiate major decarbonisation of the economy, especially the power sector. This will require investments of an estimated over 10 billion USD in the next 10 years. This is over 5% of your gross domestic product. It will require rebalancing the energy mix towards more renewable energy sources, necessitating significant investments reform and technical support. At the same time, having traveled across Bosnia and Herzegovina, I realize that it is important to be mindful of the need to be careful, to have careful planning and execution of this plan. As some of your communities here are largely mono-industrial. That is, the communities are almost purely dependent on the energy sector, such as those that are around uh, coal mines. We must not leave these communities behind as we move forward but support them to diversify with viable sustainable development alternatives, such as green investments and green jobs. But putting these commitments into practice is also an incredible opportunity for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Your energy sector has vast potential. Power generation in this country increased by 50% between 2001 and 2013, and per capita generation has reached the same levels of Eastern European countries. Energy exports more than quadrupled between 2001 and 2011. And Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of just two countries in Southeast Europe that is a net exporter of electricity. You also have significant untapped hydro, wind and solar energy potential. This is something incredible that can be built on and we have heard many ideas today from the ministers about how this can be done. However, at the same time, with these promising signs, there are some immediate challenges and priorities. Cold fire power plants still account for about 60% of total electricity generation at a time when the, move, when the whole world is moving away from coal. In 2013, more than 95% of the ge generation capacity was owned by three electroprivators. Inadequate strategic planning and the slow place of reforms in the sector means that Bosnia and Herzegovina, as we have heard, has energy inefficiencies. So when you look at Europe, it has one of the most inefficient and carbon intensive countries. The energy sector desperately needs new investments. According to the World Bank, Bosnia and Herzegovina requires investments of over 3 billion in new power plants over the coming two decades. This is essential to renew and rebuild a robust and competitive generation system. On top of this, there also needs to be more investment in terms of moving power and shifting towards renewables. But these investments will deliver dividends. This is the future. And by investing in the future, you will be ahead in the future. The NDCs are a great achievement. We now need to build a roadmap and invest in transitioning this pledge into action. As the ministers have highlighted, much is already happening. There are many great ideas that are there. What we need is to get behind them and to move forward. We, the United Nations family, including with the incredible support of the United Nations Development Program, together with other international community partners, remain committed to supporting you in this incredibly important journey. This is not only for, for improving the benefit of those people who are here today, but this is for the health and well-being of Bosnia and Herzegovina's children and their children's children into the future. Because as we know, this is the decade of action. And unless we take these, these incredibly important steps now and make the decisions that have been highlighted by these ministers, our children's children will feel the burden much more so than what we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, her Excellency Johanna Stromquist, the Ambassador of Sweden in Bosnia and Herzegovina, will uh, take the floor. We would uh, like to use uh, this opportunity to thank uh, the Swedish uh, Embassy for all the support that they have provided, including the support to the uh, combating uh, climate uh, change in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Please, the floor is yours.
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, colleagues, friends, uh, for the moment, the climate crisis is overshadowed by the ongoing health crisis, but they are linked. And if we do not change our behavior and the way we treat the environment around us, the planet will soon be inhabitable. This is the time to act, to take the opportunities to build back greener and more sustainable. All countries should and can commit to national reduction of emissions. Bosnia and Herzegovina is a great example of this. For Sweden, protection of environment and climate action is very high on the agenda. The Swedish government strives to lead by example. We, we have set an ambitious goal to become the world's first fossil-free welfare country and to become climate neutral by 2045. To achieve these goals, we are working closely with others within the EU and the UN, because no country can solve the climate crisis on its own. The EU has included the countries in the Western Balkans in its work to reduce the climate impact through the Green Agenda. This is a truly unique opportunity for this region, and we, we encourage you to use this moment as an opportunity to take concrete measures to guarantee a sustainable recovery and long-term growth that will protect our most pre precious resource, the planet that we, we live on and the world we live in. Meeting the targets of Bosnia and Herzegovina's NDCs will require significant decarbonization of the economy, especially of the energy sector. Bosnia and Herzegovina would need to shift from fossil fuel, fuels to renewable sources and to do much more energy efficiency. This transition cannot happen overnight and increased investments are needed, as we've heard before. Sweden is the biggest bilateral donor in Bosnia and Herzegovina in the area of environment and climate. We work with partners to improve energy efficiency, air quality, solid waste management and wastewater treatment. And by supporting overall policy making, strategies and action plans and reporting in the area of environment and climate. Energy efficiency is key to reducing, reducing emissions and for improving the environment. It also brings positive health, economic and social benefits to citizens. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, the public and residential sector is recognized as the largest final energy consumer, consumer and, the resource of air, and, sorry, and a source of air pollution. The average energy consumption of the public buildings in Bosnia and Herzegovina is three times higher than the EU average. Since 2014, Sweden has been supporting improvement of energy efficiency of public buildings in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and from this year, we are also supporting measures to make private homes and companies energy efficient. So far, energy efficiency or renewable energy measures implemented on total of 229 buildings and in 11 public lighting systems across the whole country within the Green Economic Development Project implemented by UNDP. Uh, it has reduced in total CO2 emissions by 14,500 tons contributing directly to achieving Bosnia and Herzegovina's NDC's targets and reducing air pollution. Sweden is also supporting Bosnia and Herzegovina in developing a countrywide environmental strategy and action plan until 2030 and beyond, as we've heard from the ministers. The strategy and action plans uh, will give the authorities a strategy and a plan as well as concrete actions to achieve and strategic goals uh, when it comes to environmental sector. It will help with the EU integration process and open for additional external funding. The citizens will enjoy the results, cleaner air, water, soil, and general environment. Sweden is also providing uh, support in the area of air quality improvement, assisting the country to strengthen the capacity for air quality management at different levels. It will help Bosnia and Herzegovina to establish a system for air quality data, collecting, managing, storing and reporting on air quality in line with EU requirements and setting up reference laboratories and prepare for the EU accreditation of these laboratories. It will also support necessary legislation changes that will enable their operation. It will also establish more capacitated inspectorates as well as further development of reg regulations and leg legislative, legislative frameworks in the area of air quality. These are some of the, the major projects that Sweden is supporting, working with our partners here in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We will continue to work with partners globally, as well as here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, to reduce the impact of climate change. Because if we continue our dependence on fossil fuels, it will be a growing threat against our health and prosperity. We need to start acting now to become climate smart 
and protect the planet and all its inhabitants before it's too late. Together, we can turn the ne current negative developments around regarding environment and climate. Everyone must do their part, government, citizens, civil society, and the private sector. Taking environmental action is crucial and requires authorities at all levels to take a holistic approach. Harmonized actions in different sectors, such as in energy, transport, agriculture, industry, are required to achieve these ambitious environmental and climate-related targets that you, that you have set for yourself. Collective environmental efforts will have a positive impact on citizens' lives and their well-being, and it will boost the economy, modernization, and protect the environment. For these reasons, I would like to strongly encourage everybody in Bosnia and Herzegovina to demonstrate full commitment towards environmental and climate action in line with its uh, decarbonization pledge stated in the NDC and, with, and in line with EU uh, recommendations. Sweden will remain a partner in this area over the years to come. We will continue to support, support the strengthening of institutions and reforms at state and local level and put a focus on environmental investments such as wastewater treatment, solid wastewater management, energy efficiency, nature protection, air quality improvement, and safe handling of chemicals. We will also continue to support civil society organizations to work to raise awareness about the changes that have to be made and share knowledge, innovative solutions, and experiences from Sweden on environmental issues, because we have to work together and together we can make it. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador of the Kingdom of Sweden, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and another country that hosts COP26 is Italy which is focusing on youth activists in the area of climate change. So I'd like to ask uh, Deputy Ambassador of Italy, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Matteo Vengelista, to address us. Parliamentarians, colleagues, uh, it is a great honor to have the opportunity to address you today on this important occasion. And thanks a lot to the Parliamentary Assembly of Bosnia and Herzegovina and to United Nations for organizing this important meeting and for inviting us to take part in it. I shall also bring you greetings on behalf of Ambassador Minazi, who unfortunately could not make it to be here with you today uh, since he's leaving for good the country. On behalf of the Italian government, I would really like to congratulate you all for the submissions of the new, updated, and more ambitious um, nationally determined contributions to the Paris Agreement, to the Paris Agreement Secretariat. It is a milestone agreement, which should not be seen as an objective per se, but more as a starting point. And it was really interesting and enlightening for hearing from you, from Ministers Kosharats, Japo, and Golic about the leadership and the commitment that you're ready to put into this joint endeavor because it is exactly what is needed, leadership and commitment from all levels of government and society to decarbonize the economy. I would also like to recall that these endeavors are also a substantial part of the European Union integration process, and it's part of the European Union Commission opinion on the membership, on the application for membership of Bosnia and Herzegovina to the, to the EU. A lot is needed, as it was already said, uh, and especially a country level harmonized approach in strategic planning needs to be ensured to address alignment with the EU environmental key at all level of government in a consistent and comprehensive manner, including on air quality. Italy is ready to help. We are ready to support you as an EU member country, to provide technical assistance in the, if needed, and to take part in all joint endeavors that might be jointly identified. Italy is one of the countries that are more committed to pursuing the objectives that aim to environmental protection, energy security, and the reduction of polluting and climate change emissions. Called upon to draw a proposal for the 2030 National Energy and Climate Plan, Italy has created an ambitious strategy that will allow the country to contribute in a massive way to the achievement of the goals set up within the Paris Agreement and within the European Union with our partners. What we believe is essential is engagement with all relevant stakeholders, governmental, but also civil society, academia, and youth. 
As Ambassador Field just recalled, UK and Italy will co-chair this year the 26th Conference of Parties to the Paris Agreement, which will be held in Glasgow. And the pre-summit will be held this year in Milan, together with a side event, which is called Youth for Climate. It will bring together young representatives from each of the countries which are parties to the agreement in Milan in September, and I'm very happy to share with you that last week, the two representatives for Bosnia and Herzegovina were identified from the pre-COP26 Secretariat and will be come to Milan next September. We are engaging with them very actively and we have built together uh, in the past few months a network of young activists and local organizations, which we decided to call Zelen Ambreja, the green network of BIH. It is really heartwarming to see how Bosnia and Herzegovina youth is indeed part of this global movement to fight against climate change and they want to be heard, they want to sit on the table and have a voice in it. This is also one of the main, uh, if I can say, elements of the Italian development cooperation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We are focusing a lot on support to sustainable development and tourism together with all our partners, United Nations, UNDP, Italian NGOs, and to giving youth in Bosnia and Herzegovina through these actions also means to stay in the country and to find job opportunities. That is not just that, Italy has become in the past few years uh, one of the leaders in the production of renewable energies. We are the second biggest producers in Europe of renewable energies, leading both in eolic, solar, geothermic and hydroelectric um, power production. We are more than willing to work with you uh, together on how we can advance the environmental protection and renewable energies agenda, because as it was already said about all my predecessors, and I would close it here, this is a joint endeavor. Nobody can fight climate change alone. And we have to do it with everybody, with governments, with local institutions, with NGOs, with civil society, and with youth. Thank you very much. Hvala vam mnogo. Prije nego što zaključimo... Thank you. Before we conclude today's uh, event, I would like to call on you to take the floor if you have any comments or conclusions or suggestions as to what direction we need to take or what strategies we need to uh, implement. Mr. Miletic, please take the floor. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say a few words in the context of this event and I'd like to thank you for several things. I don't want to waste too much of your time. I would like to thank your excellencies for organizing this event and for attending it. I'd like to thank everyone who uh, came from the, the state of an entity, government institutions, and it's been a long time since I've attended uh, an event with, uh, with a theme better than this one and uh, I'd like to thank you for decorating the, the room like this and I hope our colleagues will learn something from you, our, our foreign colleagues, and I'd like to thank the, the people who are active in the Green Club and I'd like to thank our minister who is one of the most agile ministers in the Council of Ministers and at the beginning uh, I would perhaps like to make a joke, I hope you like it. When I came here I asked Mr. Sasha what does this plant represent and he told me that as this plant grows it emits uh, negative ions that reduces negative energy. So our, our government representatives uh, should pass a degree maybe to keep uh, these plants in each of our offices in order to reduce the negative energies and I'd like to thank you for showing us that uh, we can have good manners and that we can tackle important issues. We don't have to be frivolous. 
and uh, we are discussing very important issues now and i hope that you will help us with this so in the end i'd just like to say two or three more things so please don't be angry uh, with me when i say that you are presenters of the international community so you heard some data about Bosnia and Skovina. And what I'd really like to ask you is, if it's possible, we need to work on raising awareness among the BH population. So we need your help in this context. Because people in Bosnia and Skovina, as was mentioned before, when it comes to power, we are the only country that has a surplus of energy of power production. So you can imagine what would happen if we were to enrich this with solar energy and wind energy, and we might be the only country in the region and the world that has vast uh, potentials and capacities when it comes to potable water. So we are number one. In Europe, we have Mount Vranica, which has uh, 65 sources of potable water. So, please help our economic operators and everyone else to gain access to these funds. Please help us, please direct our citizens how to gain access to these capacities so we can develop them in the future. The, are people from Great Britain with us and uh, there's the federation government issue that's the issue of of exploitation of coal and coal mines in Bosnia it's not just an a environmental problem it's also a big social problem so please help us with your experience because from what I recall um lady thatcher she had resolved this problem in great britain so please help our institutions what we should do to resolve these problems in Bosnia Herzegovina. thank you again and thank you for this event and this was really wonderful thank you there's more time for an additional one or two brief comments please I would like to greet everyone. Thank you for inviting me. It's really a big pleasure to hear all of these things. I'd like to agree with my colleague Miletic. What we heard today is very important for the environment and environmental protection. But the essence is that we must change the mentality of BH citizens when it comes to protection of environment, which is directly tied to their lives and the quality of their lives. We have to work on this through education, through courses and workshops. And I agree with Her Excellency, the Swedish ambassador, when she said, all of us must contribute to this. All of us must contribute and do our part, and we need to transpose this in our local communities. And there is a bright example from the town where I live. Uh, air pollution is a big problem in Zenica, and thanks to the uh, heating uh, plant public-private uh, project, uh, Zenica will get a cleaner source of central heating, and the project is worth 53 million euros. 80% is paid by EBRD, and 20% is seed capital. So Zenit's authorities are currently focusing on raising awareness among the population about uh, heating. And this is also a call to the households to connect themselves to this source of heating, because one of the biggest polluters in Zenitsa is the burning of fossil fuels in private homes for heating. And another thing I'd like to say that the heating plant in Zenica, once it's launched in late 2021, the emissions of carbon dioxide from the steel mill will be reduced by 80%. So it's equally important for 
uh, city heating, uh, energy efficiency, and uh, health protection. And education of the population is of crucial importance for us to implement all of these projects. It's very important that the citizens living in rural areas need to understand what the environment is, what environmental protection means, and what energy efficiency means. Thank you. Thank you very much for these words. Yes, please. I agree. And I'd like to also to, to thank the organizers for this important event about the NDCs and uh, about our pledges, which are very ambitious. We are aware of that. And in addition to the political context that we have, that has been made additionally difficult with the uh, current epidemiological situation and climate change, energy efficiency, uh, this is an issue that we have to keep in focus constantly. There are good examples, good practical examples of good energy efficiency projects that have been implemented in uh, many municipalities and lower levels of government, but now we see a sort of a standstill of the projects aimed at increasing energy efficiency. And we saw the data that Bosnia-Herzegovina is still one of the uh, most energy inefficient countries in the region. So we need to look for opportunities there in terms of sustainable economic uh, development and production into the production segment that needs energy needs to find alternatives and uh, wind exploitation and sun exploitation is an alternative that uh, is reflected in the NDCs as well and I'd like to join this uh, what uh, my colleague Militic said that the uh, reconstruction of of the coal mines and transformation of coal exploitation is a big challenge for Bosnia and Herzegovina and I have to say that this is an optimistic plan for up to 2030 to 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 reduce this the emissions by one third uh, the emission of greenhouse gases. It is a major challenge, and we need significant support. We are aware of the situation with Sanskrit. I'd like to thank all of the embassies that, uh, that are here and that support us, and I'd like to thank the United Nations as well. But uh, judging by our political, current political context, we need, all of us need to focus more in order to get concrete support so we can meet our pledge. Our intentions are good, but we are aware of the general situation and we need significant financial assistance through the projects uh, in energy efficiency and use of renewable sources of energy. Thank you for these words, so Mr. Prodanovic. It is my pleasure to participate at this uh, conference. Uh, I would like to express uh, my uh, gratitude uh, to the excellent uh, cooperation between uh, the uh, state level minister Mr. Kosharat uh, and uh, the entity level ministers, Mrs. Uh, Japo and Mrs. Golic. Uh, I'm really glad to be participating in an event uh, focused on this important uh, topic. I think that we need to do more. We need to look at this from the global perspective. The whole world uh, is working on uh, protection of environment and uh, reduction of GAG. But we need uh, to translate this to Bosnia and Herzegovina and the region. There is no uh, healthy environment without a global cooperation. Forty-five years ago, I did uh, my uh, um, examination uh, 
discussing uh, the importance uh, of uh, the environment. Uh, and I even received uh, uh, an award. But even then, 45 years ago, we were uh, discussing uh, the emissions uh, and uh, the uh, vessel uh, Tory Canyon and uh, the oil uh, spots. Uh, and uh, the world has changed since then uh, with new technology and the new problems. Uh, and what we as parliamentarians and executive authority can do is to adopt a legislation that will follow the example of modern countries. We need uh, to promote the healthy lifestyle. In Copenhagen, for example, I was fascinated with the number of people using bicycles. Uh, just imagine uh, how uh, much we could uh, reduce uh, CO2 uh, if uh, we were using more bicycles than cars. Also, we need uh, to focus uh, on promotion and incentives uh, uh, to uh, citizens that are purchasing environment-friendly vehicles. Uh, and also, we need uh, to start uh, with uh, education in the kindergarten, uh, from kindergarten to university, and then also working on energy efficiency buildings. Uh, the key is uh, in a strategy to produce healthy energy and to protect the categories that will potentially lose their jobs, uh, the ones that are using uh, the brown energy and also to simulate uh, uh, solar energy, uh, wind uh, and uh, efficient water energy and water power plants that will not be detrimental uh, to the environment, not in the way that these uh, mini uh, hydropower plants are being built. Uh, I do hope that we are sending a good message from Bosnia and Herzegovina that we can work uh, on the t uh, objectives that are good uh, for everybody. The vice uh, chairman of the RS would also like to take the floor. Distinguished ambassadors, ministers, uh, dear colleagues, it is a great uh, pleasure to be here uh, in Sarajevo. And this atmosphere is very, um, I'm very glad uh, to see uh, this um, atmosphere here because this is showing that we have common interests and common topics. I belong uh, to younger generation of politicians, uh, generation of 90 and younger. We are going to take over the uh, obligations uh, and uh, commitments. Uh, and what I want to underline is that protection of environment and protection of all our rivers, disregarding whether we are talking about radioactive waste or nuclear waste, we have the issue here with uh, the disposal of waste uh, on the border with Croatia. And Minister Sasha Kosharat has uh, uh, mentioned something about this, and also Mr. Sasha Magazinovic mentioned this. But I also want you to hear my voice because I live nearby many citizens are very concerned and worried a year ago I was uh, visiting river Una and you could drink that water if we put the nuclear waste on the border it will not be possible to swim in the river or drink it and I invite you to visit us in Novigrad and use the benefits of Una River thank you all for your comments and your suggestions and for giving your comments contribution to the discussion about this uh, very important social topic. Uh, we have uh, heard uh, the addresses of uh, domestic and international representatives, uh, and uh, one thing that is extremely encouraging uh, is the commitment of uh, the entity-level authorities, uh, Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Republic of Srpska, as well as the level of Bosnia and Herzegovina, to focus on strong, coordinated efforts to improve environment uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, as well as to focus on holistic political 
fully aware engagement uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We heard that it is very important to involve the civil sector representatives, uh, academic, academia, government institutions, non-government institutions, but also youth, so that Bosnia and Herzegovina could make steps forward in a brave manner. We have heard that there is a number of problems that we are facing, but there are solutions to these problems. Thank you very much for your participation and goodbye.